Craig from germflyers.com here and happy Thanksgiving, happy holidays to all. I just received via DHL direct from Hong Kong the new Extreme Version 2, I1 Extreme Version 2. The company is rebranding and they're now calling themselves Drone Art, which I guess is a fitting term because they have definitely redesigned a lot of their products. Uh, we're going to take a quick video walkthrough of what they have here included in this package. This is a mid-size FPV type of a drone. So let's take a look at what they're giving you uh, in basic package and how it works and then we'll take it out for some flights. Here's the new Extreme Version 2 by Drone Art. RC Logger is the name of the company, of course, and those who have a memory uh, a few years back remember that they came out with one of the first low-cost brushless drones, the i1 Extreme. We tested that and we still have it on our blog, and I really liked the model a lot, and it was very reasonable. You got a lot for your money, I think about $139, but it did have some teething problems. Uh, there was unexplained losses of power, crashes, uh, and other things that a hacking community ended up being built up around it and people modified their uh, I want extremes and for the price of 129 or 139 for the basic model, you were still getting a good value and those who enjoyed souping up their models uh, got a lot out of it. But meanwhile, RC Logger, Drone Art, whatever we're going to call them now, is they've went back to the drawing board and they've come up with uh, their FPV model, the Extreme Version 2. Basic unit is what looks like a standard FPV quadcopter. It has the camera on the front. The camera is manually adjustable to different angles and the back compartment contains the flight battery. Um, the flight battery is different than most of your old RC loggers in that it's fit in very tightly. There's a series of spades. I don't know if you can see them here on the camera there, but uh, you'll see a series of numerous spades are inside there uh, along with the circuit boards circuit boards look very very clean compared to the old ones very small and again the battery set up uh, with the spades on the battery and to switch the batteries you just basically press it in and close the cover speaking of covers it comes with uh, there's comes with a second cover. Mine came with the yellow cover. They have six different colors in terms of the uh, shell of the quadcopter. Take a quick look. We saw the inside, how the engineering has obviously changed and improved uh, with the smaller circuit boards, uh, the, the spade connectors for the batteries, the easily replaceable battery. Uh, but taking a look at the bottom of the quadcopter we can see changes such as these flexible rubber uh, d-shaped landing pads these things look like they'll take a lot of shock and uh, also the nylon uh, heavy-duty nylon braces on each of the legs that extend all the way from the body and they're heavily screwed in and then they go around the motor mounts looks like they're easily replaceable it's four blades there's three uh the blades have uh three propellers on them and the blades are replaceable on a twist off matter there's no doubt that looking at this machine uh you know the two years that they spent uh, going back to the drawing board and reworking virtually every single part of the system 
Uh, my hope is it pays off in reliability and in the fun factor. Another example of uh, the, the better engineering they've come up with, it comes with this beautiful battery charger and it comes with two batteries. They're, they're different. There's a battery for the transmitter and this is the transmitter that has a screen built into it. And if we remove the rear here, we see that there's a connector for that battery. So there's a rechargeable battery for the um, controller and the FPV screen. Now, you know, I'm not sure if I'd have rather had a second battery for the machine and, and put disposables in here, but uh, somebody over there makes those decisions and I'm sure the batteries aren't going to be too expensive. Um, Drone Art and RC Logger has always been known for their owner's manual. The owner's manual is beautiful. Uh, it has real table of contents. It's all in full color. Um, uh, you, you can't do better. You, you, you know, if I had to, I'm a technical writer myself, and um, if I had to grade this, I'd say it's a, a 9 out of a 10 just to leave a little room for something else. But uh, any answers that I was looking for, uh, any questions I had, I was immediately able to find the answer in the manual. So the battery charger, when the blue lights are lit, that means that we're fully charged, whichever battery we have in there. Right now I have the transmitter battery in there. The regular battery also fits in there. And we can see if you pop open this case, Inside the case, there's a series of spades. This also charges the batteries for the machine itself. It has a safety door here so that the contacts aren't exposed. And basically, you just take the battery and push it in there. And the battery is showing as not charged. Uh, they'll all turn blue once it's charged. I uh, haven't quite figured out what the second USB is, unless you're looking to get more power out of something. Uh, I'll read the manual a little bit further and <laughs> hopefully be able to answer that question. Uh, I don't see any other USB connectors. I thought maybe it was for, for upgrading or for charging through the uh, controller, but it's not. Um, the micro SD card uh, for taking videos and pictures, it fits right into the rear of the uh, Extreme version 2 right there. I think all in all, uh, people will be mostly impressed by the lightweight of this, the uh, total engineering. It doesn't look like it's built from a batch of parts that you, uh, you, know, that you found up on the shelf, uh, the spade connectors for the batteries. Uh, the lightweight uh, chips that are in there. Uh, it surely seems like they used some uh, integrated circuit on a, on a chip, SOCs, because to get it this light, uh, lightweight would require um, a lot of work. The old uh, RC1, the first version of this, had a stacked circuit board that was vastly larger than this. But uh, after all said and done, what really matters are two things, the usability, you know, how easy it is to get the thing in the air, keep it in the air, um, and to control it, and also how much fun it is. Now, something I didn't mention is that it also has an optional headset that can be connected directly with the controller. So you don't have to go through any kind of a fancy setup to hook up the goggles and I do have a set of the goggles but I want to learn how to fly this thing in a basic fashion and make sure everything works um, before I hook up the goggles and demonstrate those so uh, I hope you enjoyed this quick introduction to the uh, extreme version 2 from RC logger now going to be known as drone art and they have a whole series of newer units. We tested one of their larger, the Nova 350, 
and that thing worked like a champ. We were hauling some nice payloads with it. It has a GPS and a number of other features. It's a larger 350 or larger size quad. Uh, this is more of a fun quad. It does not have GPS, return to home, and all of those type of features. This is for bombing around the backyard, uh, parking, empty parking lot, uh, empty park, or wherever you, uh, the beach, wherever you feel comfortable. And soon we'll see how well it performs. Oh, it um, comes with a 2S battery and that's the way it charges up. But apparently you can use a 3S battery, those of you who are crazy racers and uh, you can get a lot more power out of it. Uh, RC logger, drone art, uh, whatever you want to call them, has, has done that with some of their past models and the hobbyists really appreciate that type of a uh, setup. So, it's time to fly. Basic control, powering on. First power on the transmitter and then power on the extreme. I did that right. Mode control, we'll have to assume I'm in mode two. Doesn't say anything, I, I have awful good connection. Arm, disarm button, ha, same button. Arm, disarm. This one must turn it on. Look at that, it works. Well, I'd say we had quite a successful first video in terms of the introduction of this machine. Now, next time it's gonna be time to fly. I'll have to put an SD card in there, see what I can get out of it. Yeah, I'm a little short on battery power. I only charge it up part way. And the other thing is, it's on the easy mode, which actually is harder for me to operate because it won't, it won't run the steep angles the way I want it to, but we can surely see enough from this video that it flies, and it flies well. Crashed it a couple times, nothing happened. Like any FPV unit, it's going to keep going in the direction you, it doesn't stop like a GPS type of a unit so you definitely have to be careful in learning how to how to operate it